Hi, I'm Sterling, and in this video, you're learning some idioms and slang language in American English. And I'm going to speak in my normal Ohio accent, which sometimes isn't completely clear, but maybe at a slower pace. And the subtitles will help you follow what I say. This video will help you get more, more familiar with the average United States accent, and I use a lot of idioms. And sometimes you can figure out what the idiom means from the context. Sometimes you might need an explanation. I apologize for the bad audio quality. My house echoes and there isn't much I can do about it unless it gets some soundproof material for the walls. Well, let me tell you, coming up with Fresh material constantly can be a pain in the rear, a pain in the ass. We use those expressions a lot. Sometimes in order to get enough new material, I feel like I have to go hit the books. I've had days when I needed to make progress, but there was, there was this one day not long ago when, when, when I just felt like I was in a fog, like, I couldn't really even think. I really just needed to get out and clear my mind. And that day, the way I left the house wasn't so smooth. It sort of started with a stupid argument with my wife. I'm just going to tell you a story like I tell a lot of stories. And I'll help you pick up on the idioms and the phrasal verbs in the transcript. That'll also help you through the story. And you'll find a link to it, to the transcript, in the comments section under the video. So, let me ask you, have you been there too? I mean, like, have you been in a fog? Not able to even think or do anything? It's like, you don't even want to get up and go to the fridge for a snack. Does that ring a bell? That's where I was the day I'm going to tell you about. When I feel that way, usually there's not a snowball's chance in hell that I'll finish anything at all. Sometimes we say it'll be a cold day in hell before that happens. I felt like I was procrastinating, 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 because I knew the things I had on my plate. But when you're putting something off, sometimes you say, yeah, that'll get done when hell freezes over. Sometimes if I have a lot of busy work, it doesn't require a lot of thought and I don't feel like doing these things, then I ask my wife to give me a hand. And then again, that doesn't always help when I have a lot on my plate because it's harder for her to iron out the difficulties of the stuff that I know the best. But this particular day, I was just feeling a little bit pissy. You know what I mean? Pissy. I got mad at her for not doing something. And she got all down in the dumps after I yelled at her. And I felt bad for that. And who wouldn't? You know, I can't speak for you, but I do know that on occasion, once in a while, I can be a rude and arrogant jerk. So, I went off on her because the sink was full of dirty dishes and I had no clean socks. Raising my voice was uncalled for, but that's what I did, just because I was feeling pissy. No other reason, really. It's just that sometimes I feel pissy. And she said, Jeesh, why are you going all ballistic on me anyway? Uh, you know, I didn't really mean to blow my top, but I, but I just lost control. And then she was feeling really depressed, like she was really down in the dumps. And like I said, because for a while there, we just didn't see eye to eye. And I lost my temper and I just hit the roof. 
I didn't know what to say. So I just asked her, Penny, for your thoughts. And she said I didn't have to ask how she felt because a picture is worth a thousand words. And she asked me why I had gotten so bent out of shape. And I said, I didn't know. And she said I'd better not do it again because I had been treading on thin ice for a long time. But I knew she was angry after I asked her if we could kiss and make up. And she said, yeah, when pigs fly. She said, you could have done that much earlier, but now that ship has sailed. Well, you know, I was still feeling pissy. <laughs> I was tired of her negative mood, so I decided to just hit the road at that point. She sure she wouldn't be in a barrel of laughs, so, so I said to her, hey, I'm going for a drive. And she said, don't you want me to come along with you? And I said, frankly, no, you'd just be a fifth wheel to me. And she said, so that means you want to spend some time alone? And I said, yeah, of course. And I just walked out the door because I was still feeling a little pissed off. And then she yelled at me. She yelled out at me with, uh, as I was leaving. She said, how long are you going to be gone for? And I was still kind of mad. And I said, till the cows come home, okay? And then I just, I slammed my car door and I left. Well, it was a hot, humid night and there were more mosquitoes than you could shake a stick at. This is when we lived in Florida. And I knew I wasn't going to have a ball. I thought maybe I should hold my horses for a bit before I left. Because I was hesitating as to whether I should go out or not. And then, I, and then I started to think, well, you know, this little town doesn't really have much to offer me. Maybe I have bigger fish to fry. But I wasn't really going to leave town. I, I hit the road with no destination in mind. I wasn't thinking about where I was going. I didn't know where I was going to go. I was just wandering around and didn't have my sights set on any particular destination. And I was feeling a little hungry. So as soon as I saw McDonald's, I made a beeline for the drive through and, of course, there was a line a mile long, but I didn't care. I had all night. No sense in being grumpy or feeling sorry for myself. That was why I left. Eating is great therapy. So when I got up to the window, I hadn't really thought about what I wanted to order yet, even though I had already waited like an eternity. So I was caught off guard and the voice from the speaker said, may I take your order, please? And I said, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, hold on a minute, I gotta think. So, so I just pulled a typical McDonald's order out of thin air because I, I really wasn't in the mood for thinking or reading the menu and I said, yeah, uh, a Whopper with cheese and large fries and extra large Pepsi. <laughs> and she said, sorry, we don't have Whoppers. That's a different chain. And we only have Coke. That, that's a different chain, too. <laughs> and I said, yeah, uh, whatever. Uh, a big hamburger thingy with a, with a, with a soda. So, uh, okay, a quarter pounder with large fries and an extra large Coke, is that right? And I said, sure, sure, whatever, <laughs> whatever it's called, thanks. And she said, less something like seven eighty-five. Please pull around to the first window. 
So I got my order. And I noticed after I paid, they gave me onion rings instead of fries. If I didn't hate onion rings so bad, I would have just accepted it and shut up. But I hate onion rings. So instead of waiting through the line again, I walked into the restaurant section and showed them my receipt and what was in my bag. And the girl behind the counter, she was really apologetic and really nice. And she gave me the fries I ordered really fast. And while I was standing there, I looked up and I... I saw the apple pies on the menu. So when the girl came back, I asked her, hey, could you add an apple pie to my order? No problem, she said, and she went to get it. And I was opening my wallet when she got back and she looked around to be sure nobody was watching us. And she said, don't worry about it. It's on me. It was my mistake. Well, I just, you know, my confidence in human beings shot up like a rocket. I mean, that made my day. I should say it made my night because it was like 11.30 p.m. So after the onion rings and fry fiasco, I walked back to my car that I parked under the street light right by the exit. And I ate really slow. I didn't think about anything. You know, that's... The therapeutic value of fast food is like no effort meditation. You know, so <laughs> instead of thinking about your breathing, you only focus on the flavor enhanced the beef and the hamburger and the extra salty fries. I know so much food, it, it takes a while. So what time it was when I finished eating, I don't know. I was sitting there with an empty mind, no longer on an empty stomach, and everything felt better. I don't know, I guess about 12.30 in the morning, 1 o'clock, I fired up the car, and I headed back towards the house. So on the way home, everything seemed cool until I looked in the rear view mirror, and I saw this car following me really close. He was like right on my back bumper. Then I figured it out. The blue and red flashing lights came on, you know. The blue light special, the gumball machine, the cops, the fuzz. My heart sunk because I hate getting pulled over, especially at one in the morning. They always suspect something. They pull you over at one in the morning. I'll tell you what happened after that in the next video. Maybe. If I get around to it. See you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video. Bye.